Hey guys, in this lesson, we'll be walking through all the steps required to download and install MySQL Server and Workbench. So we we'll start off this journey by going to www.mysql.com and then you can do the reading. We see that they have an enterprise edition and some cloud services, that's all good. But then we have to pay for most of what is advertised here. So we want to go to downloads and then we want to look for the community edition which is free for developers so we click that and then we continue with mysql community server and then we can do a bit of bit read bit of reading on the community edition which is freely downloadable and it is kept active by an open source developer and enthusiast community. So we see that one, it's open source, you can get it, you can modify it if you're already a developer. If not, well, that's fine, but it's always free for the developers and enthusiasts like ourselves. We can scroll down and then we just go to the MSI installer, which is the bootstrap installer. And then we go to the download page and then we can select the web installer so we see we have two options 120 megabytes and one 373 so we can just go ahead with the web installer since it's smaller and easier to download and then the next page would be asking you if you want to create an account or sign into your account we can skip that that's optional we can just go straight to our download once that download is completed we can launch that file launch our installer and then it will ask you probably will ask you if you want to upgrade you can just say yes and continue the next screen you'll see is our license agreement i always advise you to read it through um, and once you've read it and you accept then you can just go ahead and say accept license and terms click next you can leave this on developer default and if you think you want more power than just the defaults you can always go to full but i will leave this on developer default as this will have the server which is the whole database engine that will be driving my sql functionality and it also includes my sql workbench and then in addition to that it also has a bunch of plugins that may or may not be necessary for your context so for the purposes of this course we can just click next now note if you may have had it installed or tried to install it before, you may get this path conflicts. I had it installed before, so I'm getting a path conflict here, but you may not get it. So if you don't get it, then that's fine, but I'll just show you just in case and I'll just click next and I'll just accept that warning and go ahead. And then in this screen, you'll be prompted to install certain plugins. So some of them are manual, like the Visual Studio, Excel and Python connectors, you can click and then you can, can click check. But for the purpose of this course, we don't need any of these uh, in, in installations right now. So I can just go ahead and click next and skip over this. And then it will warn me that the requirements may not have been fulfilled. I'll just continue. And then here we see the most important things, which are our server workbench and other important plugins needed for our engine to run so i can just go ahead and click execute which will trigger the download now you you may encounter these exclamation signs and you don't panic you can just go ahead and click try again uh, sometimes it fails but then sometimes the dependencies don't load faster than the other so you can just go ahead and keep on clicking try again for as many times uh, almost every time I, I install this, I get a different experience. So your experience may be a bit different from mine, but I'll just go ahead and keep on clicking try again until everything has been downloaded and installed successfully. In some instances, you may encounter problems where no matter how much you press try again, it just won't proceed. And I'm actually experiencing that. So if you're having this experience also, then I'm going to try an alternative method. If you're not, then you can go to the next step and just wait until I catch up. But then if you are, one method that I've seen work is downloading the offline installer. So remember we downloaded the web installer for 20 megabytes and we can try the community installer, which is a much bigger file, which actually has everything pre-downloaded 
and the download there's nothing to download and fail to download so i already downloaded this and i'm going to run that installer and try to catch up to where we are so i'm just going to cancel this quickly and open this file So if you had already started the process, then you would see that maybe one or two of your things would have been downloaded already. Either way, if you get this screen, then you can go ahead and click add so that we can finish adding the software. So we want definitely the MySQL server. So we'll just drill right down and select that, click that green arrow. We definitely want our MySQL workbench. So we drill down and click that. And then we can get our router all right, and then you can look through, you can actually go ahead and install them all if you want. So I'll, I'll actually just go through and bring over all of them because I don't want to leave any stone unturned. So I'll just go ahead and do that, bring over the connectors for C++ and .NET, and these are really just connection libraries. I'll leave the Python one out of it, and I can bring over my SQL documentation if I wish, so I have a native reference on the computer and I'll bring over samples and examples which will bring forth some sample databases when we finish our installation and after doing all of that you can just double check and make sure that your list at the very least has the SQL server the workbench and the ODBC connectors and then we can just go ahead and click next and we pretty much we'll just go through all of the steps that we just went through and this time they're ready to install because there's nothing to download so I'll just click execute and then it will trigger that installation process. All right so whether you use the offline installer or the web installer at the end of the process you should be seeing all green ticks alongside each of the options that you selected and then once you have that and you're sure that everything has been installed then you can go ahead and click next and then they will start asking us to configure what we have so the first thing to be configured is our server now we can just leave this on the standalone my sql server uh, cluster is essentially when you have more than one databases that need to be aware of each other um, in this course, we won't be doing anything that complex, so we can just leave it as standalone server and click next. And then we can change our settings to dedicated computer, server computer, or development computer. In this situation, development computer is best because I'm sure this is your personal machine with other non-database related applications. So we don't have to make it a dedicated MySQL database server. So we can leave it on developer development computer. And also we don't have to change that port. This is the default port for MySQL. So in an enterprise setting, there are times when people change the port numbers for security reasons, but for our own machine, we don't have to make that change. And so we can leave everything as is on the screen, click next. And then for the authentication method, I recommend using the legacy authentication method because then you retain some backwards compatibility in case you're going to be creating certain applications or installing applications on top of this. Not every application can use this authentication method that is with the new version. So I recommend using the legacy one so that you have that backwards compatibility. And then we can go ahead and click next. And then I already had an instance installed, but at this point they would ask you for a user password for your root user. I'm going to use root. So the username is root and the password is root. And I suggest you use something that you can remember. And here I'm checking the password and clearly this is not the correct password. Okay, false alarm. So we see here the Tiki came up when I did a check. So once again, your screen may look differently. You may be asked to enter the root password and confirm it. And below that, you would be prompted to possibly add other users. But for now, we can just continue with root. And I say again that I use a very easy password. It's my personal machine, so I don't have to be very secure. Of course, if you're doing this for an enterprise setting, then you want to be very secure and in keeping with the 
password policy of your organization. Uh, but then we can go ahead and continue once we have entered that password. And then we'll see here that it's just confirming that it will configure a service and set it to start up automatically. So this service will essentially allow us to connect to the instance. Um, if you untick this, then you would have to manually start the service every time. So I just recommend you leave this ticked and you don't have to change anything here and you just click next. And then our final step for configuring our server is to execute so that it can just carry out these final things. At the end of this execution, then we should see all green ticks and then we can click finish and then we can just go ahead and configure the router. We don't have to change anything here because we're not using the router. The router would be for our cluster. So really and truly that was optional. And then we can just click next to go ahead and install our samples and examples. And once again, we'll be prompted to use that user root and that credential, that password that we provided. We can click check just to make sure that it connects successfully once again. You use a password that you can remember if you didn't and this was not successful, then you can drop me a line, whether by message or Q&A, and I will help you troubleshoot that. And then we go ahead and click next and execute once more. And once that is done, we can click finish. Now, essentially, the most important parts of this installation were the server and workbench, but then ultimately, it's nice to have other things. So when we click Next, we'll see that we have the option to start my SQL Workbench after setup. So we can just leave that ticked and click finish. And then you may see the install come up with all of what was installed. You can close this. So those are all of the things that were installed. And from here, we can reconfigure as in change the configuration settings, the port, etc. If we want, we can also choose to modify or add more or remove any previously installed one. All right, so as new versions come out, we have the installer which helps us manage our versions and we can upgrade at will. Ultimately, our goal was to see that our workbench was installed. And from here, the next video will be to connect and start running some commands.